Clutch Trucker is filmed before live and still self quarantined studio audience. And you notice I, I trimmed around his face a little bit. See that? Look in the camera, Rusty. <laughs> He's reluctant. But see, I got all this gunk because it was all matted up. But if you can see up here, right above his eye, I unfortunately nicked a little bit of the skin up there. Because I'm not I'm not I'm no groomer, baby, but at least his, his face looks a little better. He put up with it. But that's about all he's going to put up with letting me do. So, the rest is going to have to wait. Right? Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in to another edition of the Clutch Trucker channel. Uh, I know, my hair is just ridiculous. I don't know what to do with it anymore. But I need to get a cut. But you saw what I did to Rusty. I'm not, not sure I can do too much of a better job. Oh, and I haven't been saying this lately. Uh, Clutch Trucker does come standard, of course, with the Lysol wipes. Thank you. Uh, well, today's video, uh, a few things. Uh, just before I hit Nashville this morning, a uh, big truck flipped over on the off-ramp. So I have some quick video on that. Okay, they had signs moving us all to the left lane, <clears throat> which some people weren't paying attention to. Saying there's an incident ahead. It had obviously happened a while ago. But if you look past all the flashing lights up here, and look to your right, just past that tow truck bank, you can see that trailer flipped over. Right there, I'll show it to you again in slow-mo. I got uh, some video from the other day when I was driving down to Virginia to a tiny little town. I can't remember the name of it. I always want to call it like uh, Lucia. I had to refer to my notebook, Louisa, Virginia. But just before I got there on this tiny little two-lane highway, uh, which looks real pretty, it looks really cool. So I'm going to show a little bit sped up version of that here for you, but just keep in mind the lane is barely wide enough for the truck. So it looks really pretty, it looks really nice, but it's kind of a bear to drive. <laughs> dash cam thing I'm going to show you is just some moron cutting me off which you know happens all the time not as much the last couple of months since there's not as much traffic out here but uh, it looks like he's farther in front of my truck than he actually is from my perspective uh, he's barely I can barely see the back of his car and he flips over right in front of me not flips but zips over right in front of me because he's too impatient to wait asshole okay so here he is off to the right there's the idiot coming up and uh, you know it might have been okay there it's still awfully tight looks not like it's a lot wider than it is but no as I get uh, a lot farther up and he's just barely in front of my truck then that's when he decides to just zip on over and be an ass wagon here he goes yep there's no room it looks like there's more room than there actually is but he should have waited for me to pass the truck and drop behind me but no he's too freaking impatient Okay, now the reason I show dash cam clips like that is because um, those are the idiots who cause accidents out here. And they do it all the time. Uh, I always tell my wife, you know, I avoid at least five accidents a day because I'm paying attention. Uh, and that's the big problem is so much of the driving public is not paying attention. Got their phone in front of their face, you're texting, they're on Facebook, they're doing, uh, I had a cheeseburger for lunch today, crash because that was so much more important to them at the time to let their friends know that they ate a freaking cheeseburger that I don't have much patience for that. So that's why I show that stuff because now I was paying attention. I knew this guy was going to cut in front of me because cars always cut in front of big trucks because they don't want to wait. And of course they think we can stop on a freaking dime. Luckily I was watching and I knew he was going to do it and he did because people are People are assholes, and I know that. And I know they're going to act like assholes, even during this whole pandemic thing, when you'd think they'd have a little more compassion about it with, you know, the fellow drivers on the road. But no, no, they don't. No, so say, instead of me, it was somebody digging away on their cell phone behind them, and that guy whips over, 
bang, now you got a crash. And now the highway shut down, and people like me are having to sit back there going, whoa, what's going on, dude? And then all the people who don't run their CB radios, I got a whole video about that, drivers, all of a sudden turn them on, and I always call them their backup radio, because they only turn them on when there's a freaking backup. What's going on? Yeah, well, you didn't have your radio on, so you don't know, but there's some ass wagon decided to cut in front of some other ass wagon who wasn't paying attention, and, and it all goes to crap. Anyway. Okay, and for the rest of this video, I'm just going to talk more about, you know, how COVID-19 is still affecting trucking and so forth. I had that load I picked up in, um, I had two partials I had to pick up in New York, one in Mechanicville, one in Queensbury. The one in Queensbury was uh, some plastic pellets uh, that I brought down to a place called Medtronic in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, right across from the airport, and I found out why. Uh, they make um, surgical stuff, like uh, stents. You heard of, you know, stents when they put them in your arteries or in your heart valves or something like that. Uh, so for people having like major open heart surgery and stuff like that, this company makes the stents and stuff that go inside your your body, inside your um, your uh, veins, uh, arteries, and so forth. Um, and what's interesting about that is while I was there, there was a guy packing up a box. He said, well, this is going out on a flight tomorrow because they're doing surgery tomorrow morning on some guy so actually he's going out on a flight that night that's why they're right across from the airport because they make this stuff that usually uh, hospitals aren't gonna have on hand that they have to like call in and say hey we need some of these stints uh, we're doing a surgery tomorrow so they take them right there across the road and ship them out from Memphis being a fairly large city and with an international airport, they can fly damn near anywhere from there. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So uh, medical stuff I made to save people uh, from the plastic beads and pellets I brought down to them, kind of interesting. Now the downside is, of course, after delivering that, uh, I was done midday, uh, I found a little speedway, uh, not a racetrack. A speedway is the name of uh, some convenience stores. Some have truck parking. Uh, they're all across the Midwest in parts of the South. And there was a brand new one I found just up the road that I parked at, found a spot. And of course, they couldn't come up with anything decent paying for me that afternoon. Uh, so it wasn't until the next morning. So again, I had to wait, even though I was in an area where things are opening up a little bit more. Uh, the next day, they finally did find a load for me, um, going up to damn near the top of the country here, up to St. Albans, Vermont, which if you uh, know anything about Vermont, that's way up towards the top damn near Canada. To give you an idea of where exactly where that is, the closest major city is Montreal. Canada. Yeah. So now with this load I'm on uh, that I did pick up, um, it was not Memphis area, it was Brownsville, Tennessee, just about 50 miles up the road. Uh, after I picked it up, I had stopped there on my way down and I knew there was a Dairy Queen that uh, I could, that had some truck parking behind it. I could get behind and they actually let you inside. So I didn't have to go through the drive through so I got some Dilla bars, mm -hmm, baby. Uh, <laughs> some other chicken strips, those are pretty good. Anyway, had, had something good for lunch. Anyway, so this one's going, like I say, up to St. Albans, um, uh, Vermont, way, way up there. I've never been that, well, maybe I have been that far north of Vermont. I'm going to come in from a way I haven't come in before. I'm going to go to Syracuse and then go north on 81 and then hug the... Uh, Canadian border along with New York until I get across into Vermont so I'm gonna go that way so I've never been up that way before so that should be interesting there's very few places in this country I haven't driven uh, to and like uh, I did that time-lapse video about the sunrise over that uh, highway in Nevada I hadn't been on that highway before it's rare that I'm driving down a highway I haven't been on before so that'll be kind of interesting the trick is to find a place to park tomorrow night because I don't know that area that well. So like tonight, I'm parked here at the Kingsville TA. I know this one very well, and I know there's always parking here. I didn't have to reserve a spot because I knew I didn't have to. And uh, it's got grass for Rusty so he can run around. <laughs> you know, so good place to be. But what I was trying to say, like last week, out of Memphis, I had a fairly decent pain load going up to New York State. And again, this time out of uh, the Memphis area, I got a fairly decent paying load going back up north, which is good because my load's going down there, uh, paid for crap. Uh, barely paid to run the truck. So at least I'm getting paid to go back up. Now, once I get back up there, uh, who knows what's gonna happen? Because now down in Tennessee, they're opening everything up. 
Uh, they're, uh, they're pretty much their attitude is uh, COVID-19. Yeah, we know it's bad and all that, but uh, we're opening everything. Just just try to stay apart. Can you do that? Yeah, because that's what they're putting on their electronic signs. Every state has some little phrase they're making up on their electronic signs, and Tennessee is kind of giving up. And that's what they should just put up there. Uh, Tennessee, COVID-19. Yeah, we give up. That's pretty much what they should say because they're just opening everything up. There was a lot of traffic down there today. Uh, so they're still putting up, stay apart, do your part. That's the best you can do, Tennessee. But I get it. I get it. The economy's dying. We got to open things up. So I get it. I could argue both sides. Now, back up here as I get to the north, I know there's still going to be a mandatory face mask uh, rule. I've got my... Let me pull it out from under my light. Got my... My face masks made in China right here that I'll be wearing once I get back uh, in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has it too. Pennsylvania and New York State both have mandatory mask uh, wearing policies going inside any building. <clears throat> so I got them. Still got my face mask that came from Shanghai, China. Anyway, so once I get back up there, now there's not much manufacturing going on up that way because everything's still shut down. So, am I going to get stuck up there for a day or two? Probably. Probably. So that's kind of what's going on. As some states open things up, it's starting to kind of flow a little better again. But then you got states like New York and Pennsylvania, which are going, nope, nope, we're not opening anything. Everybody's still staying inside. You're under lockdown. So, just kind of wanted to talk about this because it's kind of interesting how some are opening, some are not. Some are opening a few things. The state I live in, Wyoming, the governor's announced they're going to start opening some things again, like hair salons, massage parlors, uh, physical therapy for people who need that. I think that's going to be important. Uh, so, you know, as I hate to quote it, these are unprecedented times, but they are. So everyone's just guessing. And all the governors of all the states, they're guessing. And uh, the southern states have uh, bowed into the pressure a little more, like Texas as well. Uh, where you got a lot more people flying the freedom flags saying, well, these are our freedoms and you can't take them away. And I get it. Like I say, I can argue both sides. And as somebody trying to make money out here, I, I, I go for the let's open things up. Uh, as somebody who's just trying to be an individual and not getting sick, I kind of say maybe we should keep them closed. So catch me one minute, I'll say one thing. The other minute, I'll say the other. So like I say, I could argue both sides. But that's what's happening now. So sitting here in Kingsville, uh, Ohio, if you don't know where that is, that is the very northeastern corner of Ohio, kind of right off of Lake Erie, just before you go into that little smokestack part of Pennsylvania. Uh, so I'll be heading into that tomorrow and into New York State and uh, go to Syracuse and then just start driving north into the great white north. Bob and Doug McKenzie reference, and that is Rush, by the way, who recorded that song for them. Take off to the great white north. Take off. It's a beauty way to go. And my wife brought up a fact that you know, I'm a music lover, and I should do videos about my favorite stuff, including Rush. So look for some of that coming up. Uh, Rick Beato, who has a great uh, YouTube channel, everything about music. And he has uh, what makes this song great, and he breaks it down, and you hear the little pieces. It's great stuff. Rick Beato, go look him up. Uh, but uh, I'll kind of do my take on some of that stuff. So, Rick, I'm kind of stealing from you a little bit, buddy. Anyway, well, that's it for tonight. Thanks for uh, tuning in. As always, please subscribe. Uh, please comment. I do get to your comments. It takes me a few days, but I do get to them. Please like. Uh, please comment. Please ring that bell. Sniff the magic YouTube fairy dust. Watch out.